Test one, two. <coughs> Sega. What a fantastic opening and way to set the tone. So this is Comic Zone. This is a fantastic game that came out around the end of the life of the Genesis slash Mega Drive. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at it. By which I mean I'm going to pretty much sit here and try and go through the whole thing in one go. Let's start! So the game is technically set in New York. Or at least that is where Sketch lives. According to the manual, he lives in a place called the Bowery. With his pet rat, Roadkill, who he saved from a garbage truck. Lightning strikes, and Mortis is dragged from the world of Comic Zone into the real life. And his whole plan is basically to kill Sketch, and somehow that means he will be able to steal his life and become physical. Yeah, I know. It makes about as much sense to you as it does to me. But hey, it's the 90s, this is rad as fuck, who cares? So the first thing you'll notice is this fantastic soundtrack that I'm talking all over. This was composed by Howard Drossen while he was working at the STI, that is the Sega Technical Institute. And the soundtrack to this game is just absolutely phenomenal. Oh no, I made my own comic book. Isn't life hard? Come on, Sketch. Suck it up. I'm not a superhero, but I totally become one. So, let's leave the uh, first panel. Ooh, pretty cool uh, green sky in the background, to be fair. Well, it looks like two suns, and if you look in the other panel on the right-hand side, you might see it looks like there's also two suns over there, or two moons. I don't know. Well, thank you. So, off we go. And the main key about Comic Zone is the whole thing is structured like a comic book. So in order to get from one page to the other, hey, chill out. You cross panels. And here we go, into the deceased district. We fight our first enemy, Mortis the Bully. Now the great thing about Mortis is he's such a huge guy that he's just super satisfying to wail on. If you leave him to his own devices, he will throw out a spring, which you can use to duck or dodge, and usually if he fires the one that goes straight across the screen, you'll be able to use it to duck and dodge so he can hit himself with it. But for the most part, he's gonna stay close and he's gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt. So, you can throw him in a wall. The great thing about sketches is he automatically already has a combo laid up to go, um, but most of the enemies in this game will block if you just stand next to them and hit the same button over and over and over again, so you gotta vary it up a bit. Here we come to our first choice. Right or down? So, let's go right. So Comic Zone allows you to put these things in in order to kind of get a little bit more gameplay, a uh, little bit of replay value out of the game because it is very short a game. That being said, you can roughly get through this in about, say, 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on how good you are and if you know the layout of the stage as well. Um, this is probably going to take me a little longer because I have not played this game in quite a few years. So let's see. Statue of Liberty head in the background. Look at the detail in the background of this game. Isn't these backgrounds gorgeous? So. Roadkill, buddy! So. Break the cage, but it looks like he's standing on a platform. And you know what happens if we stand on that too? You're going to have to drop something. Notably the knife. So, let's get rid of the knife now, and keep the rat. Oh, missed it on the platform, and that rips through the bottom of the floor. Now, this teaches you a quick mechanic with the levers. You can hit this until it explodes, or you can grab hold of the switch and grab onto it. And that will let you drop down into the lower panel. For the most part, you can stand on these, uh, and sometimes push them aside if you need to get to the other side. Shoulder charge if you hold, otherwise you're going to be wailing on them. And we come on Garrett Cross. I think there's only about eight types of enemy in this game, and this is the second one. See you indeed. A change of music, and we're into the sewers to meet Strigio. Fun fact with this game is majority of these voices were actually all by Howard Drossen and the guys he could find nearby in the Sega Technical Institute when they were making this game. So this is a bunch of friends and people who are knocking about the studios. I think Strigil himself is voiced by Drossen, and he is so named after his, well, 
strigils, which are the weapons he holds. Deja vu, he says, because we've been in the other panel. If you haven't, you wouldn't see that. It's a neat little touch. So the uh, exclamation mark usually means that the crate's going to explode. So uh, how about we just push this down here? Because down in this panel, there were explosives. Oh, hey, skeleton. Creepy. So a fun fact of what you can do with roll kill is you can pick him up and let him go down. Some of the stuff he can do when you let him down, he takes a look around the panel, he sees if there's anything cool, if there is, he'll rip the page and he will discover a secret for you. Usually this is just along the lines of items and such like, but I just figured I would mention it while we have a second here. And another cool effect of this game, panel breaking. Oh, you're just knocking guys off things. So these guys, while they're not a supreme threat, they will stun you enough just to knock you off the edge and kill you, and that is a hell of a way to die on the first page when you get blindsided by one of these guys and just hit just enough to knock you in a hole and kill you, which is how I imagine a lot of people die on this first stage. And that is page one. Yeah, what the fuck was that indeed? And we are done. Now this is basically just your chapter progress, I mean there's no way to not fill this the whole time, the points are a nice little addition, but I don't know if this particularly changes the outcome based on anything. Big tough door. Very tough to break. And in Comic Zone, every time you hit something, you lose health, for the most part. So what we're gonna do here, is blow the door. And this is where it comes into play what I was telling you guys about Roadkill earlier. If I drop him here, he'll have a little look around. Hey! So if we didn't spend the one I had, I would have found a new one here, provided I kept Roadkill. It is possible to lose him in these stages. He will die. Uh, but you'd get him back sooner than later. These things... ...have nothing to do with Alien at all. I, d I don't know what you're talking about. This is, this is not a violation or a copyright infringement in any way. These are just gross, slimy alien cocoony things. And they will spit out guys if you don't kill them fast enough. I ain't got time for you, buddy. Somebody needs a lot of air down here. So we are about to head down into the basement. Here we go. Having this guy's kinda handy, otherwise I'd be forced to try and punch this thing. See, my health goes down. Now, short of a lever, the only thing we can do is drop this in here and make life run. See what I mean? Now, if that was on the first page and these guys hit me and I would have fell down that hole, I'd be quite mad. The game is trying to get you to do here is to tell you whether to go left and or right. But you can't get up there if you blow this box. So what I'm going to do here is help up, break the box, collect my little item, and look, I can't get up unless I kick it just the right time. In which case, I can. But that's cheating, so you shouldn't do that. Come on, dude. Take a step closer. And he's out, and I get a free one. So my options here are pretty much only that way. Find the combination. I got a switch, and I got two rotating levers. Some sort of lock. So every time I grab this switch, well, you get the idea. It's not exactly a complex puzzle. Here we get the guys that would have come out of the big alien cocoons at the bottom of at the top of the stage. If I don't st destroy those things, those little guys come out and they keep coming until there's too many to deal with. Now these guys are kind of cool, and you're about to fight a whole bunch of them. So what they do is they will headbutt you like that, and they will also spit acid. And these are basically proto mutants, and if you grab hold of one of them, or if you can manage to grab hold of one, what they will do is they will transform into any one of the game's bad guys. Apart from, you know, like bosses and stuff. Let's see if I can get it to happen. 
Come on. There we go. I mean, now he turns into a... There you go. And you can see the sponge attack. Uh, the sponge attack. You can see the sort of spring attack that he uses. Now you can use that to hit other guys in the head. It's kind of neat. Now don't worry, because even if you've completely tanked on the end of this seal, what you can do... If I just chuck one of these... I end up with too many items in this game. Here you will find dun, da, 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 health in the form of iced tea. I I don't know what iced tea looks like that, but according to the game, that's iced tea. And here is our first boss. This is uh, I believe it's called Big Mama Mutant. And here, if you really want to cheese it, that's how you do it. Oh, there we go. Something glitched out, and I kind of pushed the little ball forward, but it still works. I know it's cheap, but come on, man. I'm already down to, like, a third health. And they wouldn't have put it there if they didn't intend you to use it, either. That, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. See, the superhero meter doesn't even go down for cheating by sticking an alien mutant above a big burn bin. You'd think that would be uncool, but the game seems fine. Now, full health. And I get my rat back. Hey, Roadkill. They surely wouldn't give him to me if there was a screen where I could already use him, right? Now, we come across our new type of bad guy. Sticks. And not the band. S-T-Y-X is his name. And I, th I like to think he's named after the band. I really hope that he's not named after the stick he holds. But then again, we saw that with Strigil. So, I mean... I don't think, uh... Sketch is very imaginative with his naming conventions because all of these bad guys are characters he invented for his comic, don't forget. We are in the latest issue of Comic Zone, which is his creation. So, uh, I think... I mean, to be fair, most of the blame could probably be blamed on Sketch's parents. If they named him Sketch and he grew up to be a penciler, then... It's their fault. They're naming conventions, right? health. There is something else in here, but I don't, uh, if you drop roadkill, you'll find something else there, but there's not really a point to do it. And that hole is gonna keep spawning these guys until I get this covered. So, that stems the problem, and some cleanup. Now, these rocks are a pain, and for the most part, there's not really much you can do, apart from just punch them. So this is, uh, yeah, there we go. Not exactly the most entertaining puzzle, but it makes you think strategically about your health, right? So that is a thing. Oh, little sticky controls there. Now this can be tricky. You want to make this explode, but you also don't want to get caught in the explosion, so you make sure you're just far enough away. If you're lucky, you won't take any damage. Excellent. So, health up again. I mean, you got to make sure you know where these things are and find them. And that was the end of the crawler. Now, the game wants me to go down. But what's this? A cracked wall? And if you stick around long enough, he will tell you that, as you see. So, let's take a health. I don't really need a knife. Yeah, it is too dark and I can't see. Here, the Kung Fung Tournament. That sounds like something I want to be involved in. Look at all those cool guys in the background. Look at all those sprites. Look at this guy right here. <laughs> I really like the style of this game. I mean, this is pretty uh, impressive for what the Genesis could do. I mean, I'm fighting a couple of guys. I have flames going on in the background. I'm in a panel layout. I'm getting my ass handed to me because I'm not paying attention. And if you get these guys, you can actually get them to fight each other as well, which is kind of neat. Because what Strigil will do is he will just flail around with his 
extra jewels. Oh. I didn't want to use that so soon, but what are you gonna do? So Gravis is in with his slinky attack. These guys are just so satisfying to hit, though. I don't know what it is, but the, the controls in this game are really tight and really responsive, and they're just really satisfying to play. I mean, who doesn't want to kick a guy across the screen like that? That's pretty cool, eh? Strigil's more annoying attacks, which he doesn't tend to do too often, but you can use that to get him to throw himself in a hole. Now this... You can waste all your time fighting, but she does also have a weakness to mice. So if you throw up roadkill, she's too scared and she runs away. The temple is to the north. But hope not, you won't make it. Yeah, says you, buddy. I've done this a million times. Later, in the mountains, we see this. No one gets past me, he says behind the UI. So, Roadkill, what you got, buddy? A grenade? Well counted, sir. What do I do now? Well... I'm gonna be cheap. In this game, if you hold A, you can basically spend a little health to get a little item called the paper aeroplane. If you throw, and it comes back. You gotta make sure it doesn't hit you because it will take you down just as easy as it takes him down. Yeah, that is pretty deep roll. So, in order to not get insta-killed by this, Push one guy off. And it's very easy to die here, so you have to be quite careful. Comic Zone has a habit of doing these sort of last minute end stage sort of cheap shots. Come on. There we go. And that was page 2 1. And here we go. 45%. I'm almost a hero. No finishes, a bunch of combos. See, I don't really uh, pay too much attention to the scoring system in this game. And as you'll notice, because we're on page 2, uh, this is 2 2, I do not get any of my health back. So it's quite easy here to take a cheap shot and die as I'm likely about to very soon. So we hit a page here, where if I stand still for a couple of seconds, the game will tell me I'm low on health. Now, if I touch this, I will pretty much take damage because somehow the bottom of those spikes will hit my shoes and that will hurt. So I gotta pull this. And as you can see, that immediately rolls back down. So time to stop, drop, and roll. And we are through. Now here, if I'm quick, I can get a question mark and I can get a rat. The question mark thing is kind of risky because sometimes what you will get is health or another item at random and sometimes you will get a bomb and you will just flat out explode. And you will take damage and there are some cheap deaths in this game where you feel low on health and you're hoping to get something useful, you will indeed just get exploded. But at least they're nice enough to give you a health after that guy. It's a risky attack because she can kill Roadkill, and she might. So we have to sort of gauge on whether or not we want the guy to survive or if it's worth it there go, to take her out. Because sometimes you, you gotta make a decision, right? Health or survival. And I hate to throw my buddy under the truck like this, but... My thanks, Alyssa. It's a bit late for that. I already took care of it. 
now. Right? Sorry, left or down. Let's go left. Oh dang! Mortis has set the page on fire to get rid of me. This is a cool little escape sequence where you get to see the panels burn down. And they try and trick you with the stand, but here we go. And magically the page stops burning. And my health slowly drains. Of course this is the final test. Apart from, you know, the rest of the game. Now you can't wait for Sticks to just sort of take these out, which he will do and then you'll have to fight him. Um, at the same time, you can do... Oh, yeah, it's a bit late for that now. You can also throw another paper airplane at him and it will do the same kind of job, and it will kill him and I think most, if not all, of the balloons. Well, punching bags. And I think this might be the end of Sketch. Oh. Go. Uh, right before the final boss, and this is where we have to say goodbye to our poor little buddy. This puzzle. I have to pull this switch. But look at that slam. So, what I have to do is say goodbye, buddy. Ah. Or if you, you know, know how to do things with timing. You can do it properly and not mess up. You can save him and wait for him and come back, but there's not really much point. And here is the old Fung. The Kung Fung Master with the funky fingernails, who always reminds me of the guy from... Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. And what he will do is he will fire his fingernails at you. And you have to knock him into the wall, into his own fingernails. So you have to give him enough rope to hang himself with, essentially. My Kung Fung is good, apparently. As you can see, it's been quite a while since I've played this, but I'm not doing too badly. Thanks for the lesson, pal. He screams continually. I guess one of the guys at the STI had a lot of fun doing that scream one day. Can you come into the office a minute? We need vocals for a game. Can you just scream? Oh yeah, and you're an old kung fu master who throws fingernails, but scream. Time for the curse of dead ships. The satellite photo shows some suspicious structures in the cool desert. A lot of games do deserts, but I have never seen a desert that's really kind of as cool as this one. Like, I forget if there's stalactites or stalagmites, but these structures growing out of the ground that look like sort of steam vent outputs. It's just a neat touch. Very 90s too, reminds me a little bit of a uh, 2008. Well, that's my own fault. Just out of arm's reach. Come on, guys, you're showing me up here. Well, that was a little bit of a tricky pain. So, further along, 
man, I hate seafood. <laughs> oh. You, you go stand over there. There. Now it's easy. Now I don't know what this thing is. It is never mentioned or comes up again, but I know it likes to chew on things. So you give it something to chew on. And don't get too close, otherwise it will decimate you pretty quickly, apparently. I might actually die on the second screen of this just from punching this guy. Yikes. So, if you ever wonder what it looks like to die in this game, you're about to find out. And that's how you die. Oh, come on, that was just too easy. I was hoping for a challenge. Let's play some more, eh? If you get past the first, uh, for every page you complete basically what happens or episode, you get an extra continue, for lack of better phrasing. And what that basically does is it's basically one life that lets you come back and try again. Uh, they don't really ever tell you this, and it's not really ever well explained. But, for people who think the game is really difficult because they keep getting caned on the first page of the game, when you get past that and beat the second page, you will find out that you actually do get some continues and the game is not that... evil. You can leave these guys to fight, but this is... It, it would take a mile of... It would take a long time if I let these guys fight it out. You can always lure one closer to you and let the guy behind start spitting acid, and when he does start spitting acid, you can push the other guy into it. And it's one way of taking these guys down a little easier, but it just takes so long. Now, all I gotta do is make sure I don't take three hours getting attacked by this guy again. still managed to walk into it. So, last time I landed right in the middle of these because I missed on my jump. But, if I place this right here... If I my jumps well, I take all of those out and I don't die. I don't think I've ever really properly fought one of these in quite a while. And then you see she's doing some damage to little old roadkill there. Come on, come down. Say hi. Buddy, do your job. There we go. That's why I rescued you out of a dumpster. Let's go. Another question mark box. Another excuse to push it down onto somebody. Me a knife and a grenade, neither of which are too useful at this point. Because what I'm going to do is activate a little secret path. Oh. Now what's going to be down in this secret path is two question marks, which means basically I have a 50-50 chance of blowing myself up. Grenade? Oh. Bombs, okay. So I'm going to take the grenade, and I'm going to keep roadkill. I dropped the superhero fist. I don't end up using those too much. That is not indeed the grenade I just threw, but a separate one. People say this game is super hard, and it is a little tricky in places, but they do give you a way out most of the time. Like, they, they don't just leave you blind, stranded, and knowing what to do. Yeah, I'm I'm this cheap. And that is a landmine. Which I don't want to step on. Come on, buddy, press it again. Oh, 
And we're done. Oh yeah. Now to start chapter three, which is nonsense. We're already the first page of chapter three. What I meant is we're about to start page two of chapter three. I always count these two as two just completely separate stages, mostly because one is in the desert and the other is in like a drowned shipyard. And what we could do here is drop down and try and grab one of these things to grab a health, but the chances of actually getting one are kind of slim. So what we're going to do is head this way. And this looks very serious. So, bust the door. Eventually. And what else should come out? But some guys. Here is a help. I only recently found out about the health in that doorway. I never saw that before. Oh, he caught me off with that one and that one. Jeez. Letting the side down here. Yeah, you guys fight each other. That would be cool. I love the fact that Strigil quite clearly says pack it in there, and if he doesn't say pack it in, then I owe somebody 10 bucks. But that's what it sounds like he says to me. Pack it in! Quit hitting me in the face! More of these guys as we start to enter the nuclear missile silo. Here we get to play with some magnets and some switches before. The general controls and puzzles of this game are kind of simple, but at the same time, like, they work. Like, it's not a terrible puzzle, it is a little simple for most of the time. You just gotta time the drop of that right. And then some of the puzzles are just as simple as this. If you were coming from the other way, this may have been a little trickier, I imagine, but not really. Here. We get rid of some nukes, which apparently Sketch can just, you know, shoulder check a nuke into another nuke and it's all good. This is major fucked up. There's a nuke in here somewhere. This is true. And I'm gonna find it. And I'm gonna try really hard not to set it off. Oh, you know it's bad when this is coming in. Not what I meant to do, but sure. The game gives you a few opportunities to do cheap shit like this. It is a little uh, tricky, but I mean, they throw three guys at you and they give you something that kills guys and a move that does it easily. So it's not entirely, I guess, unexpected. Was there anything here? Yes, there was. A knife. And this is the final door. Right behind this door is the end of the game. And all that's standing in your way is this guy. And this switch. Shall we? Let's do it. Oh, and he scores a health instead of exploding. How nice. I could have gone into the final battle with pretty much no health, but... Where was the fun in that? 
So as you see, we've reached the end of Comic Zone because this is the part that Sketch hasn't even finished drawing yet. He must have been drawing this giant super nuke right at the time his house was struck by lightning. Which brought Mortis to life, who's not having this, so he's gonna come and say hi. And this is where you see the weirdest part of the nuke that Sketch designed, is it has the capacity to store a human. Because, you know, why would you not put a human in a nuke and then, then drown him? So I don't know if she's drowning in water or radioactive water or what the hell is going on here, but let's just roll with it. I'm fighting some kind of robot 90s guy. And the only way to beat him is to let him get caught in the jets of the nuke. So I hide down here. Hey, dude, come on. Come down here and fight like a, a drawing. Come on, Mortis. And there goes Mortis. All that's left now is to take up these guys. Pull the switch and save the cop. And that was Comic Zone. Got a little uh, sketchy at the end there. Haha, uh -huh. uh, pun intended. But we succeeded. We saved the girl who magically becomes real without having to kill Sketch. So I don't really know what Mortis's plan was there. Maybe he just really dislikes Sketch. But it's the 90s. The hero gets the girl. We stand out on the roof. And we sell out our comic book. And it becomes the best-selling comic book ever! I, I just love how 90s this is. Alyssa, the fake person with no social security number or anything, somehow manages to become the chief of security for the US despite not having a passport or a birth certificate. And Rollkill gets to eat off as much cheese as he wants, and they all live happily ever after. That is, except until... Uh, until what? Until the credits? Until these guys came along? But it's a fun game. I'm a big fan of this. I think Comic Zone is pretty cool. Like, I really liked it when I was a kid. I got the version that had the CD with it. Uh, and the CD that we got was the one that was the band roadkill, not the... I think in America there was like a collected CD with a bunch of licensed music, but in... UK at the time, we got a CD that was a band called Roadkill, which was led by Howard Dross and who made his original grunge album based on the songs from this game. For example, this is the opening track, Enter the Zone. And you can listen to it, uh, well, you can listen to it online now, but you could listen to it on the CD that came with the game. So imagine that, imagine buying... You know, a Genesis game, taking it home, cracking that open and finding out there's a CD in there full of music. And it was good too, it's 90's grunge goodness. I would recommend checking it out. I wonder if, uh, the best lamb in town is still true. You should phone him up and ask. And that was Comic Zone, released in 1995 for the Genesis Mega Drive. And the meter fills up, and we hit 100%, and you didn't even get to see me do the cheesy superhero attack, but there we go. And that's the end. Well, thanks for watching you guys, always appreciate it, nice to see you, nice to hear from you, let me know what you think. Uh, am I terrible? Am I good? Was this boring? Was this great? Um, channel still new, still trying stuff out. Opinions will be appreciated and constructive criticism will be listened to. Thank you very much. I'm Rick and I'm out.